Hi, hello, Redland. Uh, my name is Lee Thompson, and this is my wife, Erica. I want to thank you for this opportunity um, to, to discuss um, how some of the, the recent events have affected us and our family. So we'll just go ahead and, and jump right in. The first question, how have the recent events affected you and your family? Um, we say the recent events have, have weighed uh, pretty heavily on our family. Uh, we've been contacted by many family members, friends, um, even one of our son's teachers have contacted us. Um, they've contacted us to talk, cry, um, ask if you know, ask for help and pray. Um, some of them are hurting. Some are looking for for answers, and some kind of just feel paralyzed. Um, others are more clear. Um, some some say they feel more clear than ever, and some have been overcome by fear. Um, and others who feel more. Um, you know, led to, to be guided by their faith. Um, you know, we have, we have three sons. Uh, they're, they're all at different ages. So the conversations which each have varied. Um, our oldest son, who's in high school, obviously he's, he's the most aware. He's experienced a, a wide range of emotions that are similar to ours, pain, anger, and also incredible sadness. Uh, but perhaps his greatest response has been to pray. And he has found that, that that has brought him great comfort. Um, we've also found that this has been a really unique pause in time and schedule with COVID um, happening, you know, at the, at the same time as all of this. So we have um, thanked God for the gift of this time, which has allowed us to truly listen to the people that Lee just referred to that have specifically reached out to us. Um, even some neighbors that we haven't maybe engaged with before, it's given us a chance to talk to them. Um, it's given us a chance to listen more, we feel. And it's been um, an opportunity to gently share how our faith is carrying us through these really incredibly um, unprecedented times. Um, we've been able to reflect individually and as a family on God's word, really this fallen world um, and the hope that his promises and plans that have never changed despite what is going on um, offer us. So we're, we're thankful for that aspect. Um, the next question is, what would you want our church family to understand? Okay, I can take that one. Um, so even though uh, where Eric and I um, come from is very different, um, our most common ground is our, our love for Christ. Um, it's ultimately, ultimately what bonded us and continues to bond us. Um, it, it really started in both of our homes, you know, many decades ago uh, when we were raised with the, with the love of Christ and we were taught to love and respect others. And now uh, that's what we teach our children. Uh, we, we want them to lead a life, um, you know, that's Christ-like, um, especially with Christ's love. Um, like with, with all sin, um, and, and that's what we believe racism is, it's a sin, uh, and it's a heart issue. So we believe that's where, where you need to start. Um, we, we continue to, re, you know, repeat to our children and, you know, talk to our children uh, that in all, in all situations, um, every layer, there's always more room for love. Um, so next question, um, how has your faith helped you during this time? So I um, am currently participating in an online study called Finding God Faithful by Kelly Mentor. And um, it's an in-depth study about Joseph and his life. And I felt that um, one of her insights in particular was, was very relevant. And it's based on Romans 1.18. Um, and it's a personal reflection of hers that she says, while we don't usually view conviction of sin as a gift, that's exactly what it is. The real tragedy is not experiencing guilt because of our sin. It's being in sin and not knowing it or suppressing our knowledge of it. Only when we see our sin and confess it can we receive forgiveness. Um, so my prayer and our prayer as a family has really been that we as a nation will see the sin of racism, confess the part that we might play even without meaning to, whether it's in thought or word, um, action or, you know, a set of beliefs, um, that we would become more aware of it, seek forgiveness for that, and find guidance from Christ in how to 
go forward and, and manage that. Um, my faith in particular has helped me because no matter how ugly the world um, has been or becomes, I'm reminded through praying, studies like the one I'm doing, um, really looking in God's word, talking with the friends and family that we have, um, that God has never and will never change. So no matter what the world looks like, um, and no matter what the world looks like in the future, he's still in control. And so our, help, our hope is um, continuing to look, keep our eyes on him. Um, the next question is, how can Redland be part of the solution? Okay, yeah, I'll start there. Um, we, we, we feel that uh, Redland's already off to a, a great start. Um, we, we have a very diverse body, so we feel like that's a, that's a great start. Um, and so we feel like um, some of the things that we can do is we can continue to, you know, look for ways to increase our diversity, um, either by, you know, who we reach out to, who we serve, or who we interact with. Um, we should also celebrate those ministries that do exist, um, you know, specifically like our mission trips to Puerto Rico, um, you know, missionaries serving in places like Kenya and Panama, and, and also our, our pr prison ministry that goes into the nearby uh, prisons. Um, and something, a verse that we've been leaning on is 1 Corinthians 12, um, where we learn that God's spirit equips believers with gifts, and we are called to work together as one body. And as Christ followers, um, I feel like we can really learn to lean into those gifts um, to right the sin of racism and make a difference. And um, some specific examples from our family that we've done, um, we've sat with the boys and written letters to the prisoners to um, send through Mr. Mitchum for our prison ministry. Um, we don't know those people personally, but we've just leaned on what it tells us to do in the Bible. and We've just reached out and shared love through a letter. Um, our family also does care packages for the homeless. Um, so as we see people um, on the streets who are homeless, we give them these packages. We ask if they mind sharing their name, and then we keep um, a family journal of their names and pray, pray for them specifically. Um, so those are just some examples that, that we as a family um, have done, and that maybe Redland could start to do um, more and more families could get involved. Um, because the verse also says, verse 26 of 1 first, first Corinthians 12 says, if one part of that body suffers, every part suffers with it. So um, as we get to know each other more and invest in each other more, our parts can work together to serve, to serve Christ and, and just to share love with one another. Yeah, um, and I would also say um, some other things we can keep in mind is that it, it, we should always be ready to listen um, to each other's stories. Um, I, I think that's the most important part. Uh, it's the most important part of communication is, is maybe not trying to come with an answer, just being willing to, willing to listen uh, to other people's stories, um, other people's experiences, you know, where they come from, and embrace that uh, as a starting point. Um, let's be ready to hurt with those who are hurting and, and serve with those who are, you know, and serve them when they're seeking advice. Um, and just kind of to wrap up, uh, I think we'll, we'll leave uh, a few statements that, you know, we're not the same. Our, our journeys are, are very different, but that, that what makes our unity in Christ all the more glorious. So thank you guys. Thank you very much for this time, uh, you know, to discuss with you.